Jeff Berwick 出生于一九七零年十一月二十四日，系一位加拿大籍嘅著名企业家，亦系一位信奉经济自由意志主义同无政府资本主义分子。一九九四年 ，Jeff Berwick 二十三岁时已经成为咗一位非常出色同富有嘅投资顾问，但却喺此时决定放弃投资顾问嘅工作。当时众人都认为佢系疯狂啦。其后 ，Jeff Berwick 成立 Stockhouse 传媒股份有限公司，却成为当时加拿大最活跃嘅金融网站之一。直至二零零二年，佢一直担任行政总裁一职。此举喺今日睇嚟系非常有眼光，因为佢完全睇准咗互联网呢个大趋势。由佢创办嘅网站，市值曾高达二点四亿美元，即十八点七亿港元。佢却将公司放售，赚取大笔金额。二零一三年喺智利高尔特峡谷 c u r r i c a v i Region of Chile 内一个 John Cobins Gold Gold Chile Project 中，更成为咗当中最成功嘅推广人员。同时，佢亦系一位经济分析师，经常喺财经节目中分享对未来经济嘅预测，内容极具前瞻性同划时代性，往往为人带嚟巨额嘅回报。例如，比特币喺二零一一年时只系价值約三美元一个 ，Jeff Berwick 当时已经鼓励人买入比特币。后嚟，比特币喺二零一一年十一月二十九日上升至历史高位嘅一千一百二十四个七毫六美元，回报达三百七十四倍之多。再者，佢亦系其中一个创造世上第一台比特币柜员机嘅人。二零零九年 ，Jeff Berwick 开办咗一个名为 The Dollar Vigilant（ 简称 TDV） 嘅财经网站，发布对未来世界经济走向嘅分析。What you are about to hear may scare you. If you are not ready for information that will not only change your world view but perhaps your life completely, then you should turn off this video now. An event with profound implications takes place in September 2015. A 3,000-year-old mystery called the Shmita. Some are aware of it; most aren't. Financial elites on Wall Street call it the end of a seven-year cycle. What they either don't know or won't say, however, is that these endings are historically disastrous, and this one may be even worse. There are signs, both economic, financial, and military, that this September 2015 could change everything about the way we live and work and even survive. Unfortunately, while Shmita may formally end in September, its ramifications could expand with considerable destructiveness. While many are not aware of the specifics, people are uneasy. A Washington Examiner article reported that 72% in a recent poll feared an economic crash, and that those expressing concern were at the highest level ever. Please watch this video to understand what you need to know and how to take action. Protect yourself and your loved ones. It may be the most important 30 minutes you've spent this year, or any year. One man has been consistently making calls about the future in finance, money, and politics for decades. They called him crazy when, at 23 years old, he quit his investment advisory position at a leading bank in 1994 to start an internet company, saying the internet would never catch on. Now you might recall Canadian financial information website provider Stockhouse Media. Now the company has received a multi-million-dollar windfall. Canadian media mogul Conrad Black, Hollinger International, took a 9% stake in the internet startup. This evening's guest is Jeff Berwick. He is the president of Stockhouse.com. This is a large company that has had a phenomenal growth rate. They're now in five countries. They are receiving now 60 million hits a month. And、uh, this is really the the, the final wake-up call. If, if they don't know now, they they really just will never know.、Um, the internet is going to be the only medium standing at the at the end of the day. His company went on to be worth a high of 240 million, and he sold the company in 2002. After traveling the world, partly by sailboat, before sinking it in El Salvador, he went on to visit nearly a hundred countries, making movies in China and living in Thailand. 
By 2009, he began a free market newsletter warning of a complete US dollar collapse within a decade. Again, they called him crazy. When we last spoke last January, you weren't very optimistic about the global economy. What would you say about the state of the economy now? The system is in collapse and it's it's unbelievable and most people don't even see what's going on. So what are the top things that are grabbing your attention right now? Mostly uh, it's how the US government and the Federal Reserve are reacting to all the problems. We're in the last days of this financial system in the US. This is Zimbabwe. This ship is going down. This is the USSR in 1989. Well lots of people would, wouldn't believe you. They'd say, you know what, you're out in left field. You're nuts. In the meantime, in 2011, he told his subscribers to start getting into Bitcoin at $3. It soon went to over $200, and he was called crazy yet again. Joining us now is the chief editor of the Dollar Vigilante, and he's a Bitcoin entrepreneur, Jeff Berwick. Jeff, welcome back. Let me get this clear here. Your side of the Bitcoin story is that you put out, or you want to put out, ATMs. So you're the point of contact where I put in my U.S. greenback dollars and I get back bitcoins. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm sure that in the past week people have said to you, Jeff, it's a scam. Answer the question. After Bitcoin rose from $100 in April, it rose to $400 by November. Bitcoin is a new evolving currency uh, and uh, because of that, and it's a very small market, the total market cap of Bitcoin is $1 billion. Uh, so we're only back to where Bitcoin was at the start of this month, uh, so it has been quite volatile. Since that time, Bitcoin rose to over $1,000 and is now back below $500, but has been very volatile, as he warned. Uh, well, it started the year 15, so it's very volatile, it's very small. And so people are really trying to gauge if this is going to become a real currency. If it becomes more and more used as a real currency, it will continue to go up as demand goes up. 然而，喺二零一五年七月十四日 ，Jeff Berwick 喺其网站同 YouTube 上载咗一段影片，内容如同右华牧师所分享，有关 Webots 对二零一五年经济嘅预测。呢、这个经济嘅预测就系由二零一五年九月十五日开始，喺短短两个月内，全球将会出现全面性嘅经济大崩溃，亦会令全球社会同政治出现大动荡。Now, however, he is making his latest, most dire prediction. He is calling for a major disruptive event in not only the markets, but possibly in politics, the money system, and your way of life. All to come, possibly as soon as September 15th, 2015. It is a pleasure to have back on with us world-famous adventurer, entrepreneur, investor, and writer, Jeff Berwick. This may be our most important show yet, so let's get right into this, as you're not going to want to miss what Jeff Berwick has to say today. And, uh, Jeff, you've never been shy about telling people your opinions, but your latest pronouncement may be your boldest yet. <laughs> yeah, it is, but I really think now is the time to be bold. I found that most people don't know about this information, and I think it needs to be shown the light of day. I guess I should start by saying that I've never made such an exact short-term prediction, but when people see the evidence I've uncovered, they'll understand why I believe a massive event could happen as early as this September. Give us some background on how you came to this conclusion. Well, it started out quite simply. In 2010, I stated that the US dollar would collapse within the next decade. Jeff Bowick 指出，美国嘅国债已经达到天文数字嘅十八万亿美元 （eighteen trillion U.S. dollar）。喺二零零八年金融海啸中，美国政府曾进行量化宽松政策，使无前例地无限量发行美元。呢、这个所谓嘅挽救经济行动，令美国经济一去不回头。To me, the path was quite clear. You just look at the total debt of the U.S. government now at eighteen trillion dollars and its growth, and you can see where this is headed. And when you look further, you can see that even with a monstrous $18 trillion debt, it was only a small part of the story as so much of the debt and liabilities of the U.S. aren't properly accounted for. Today, the amount of debt and liabilities of the U.S. government is over $95 trillion. 
That's $300,000 per person in the U.S. or $1.2 million in federal government debt and liabilities for every family of four. I'm sure you remember the Great Recession or the financial crisis of 2008. It was very bad. And even George Soros was quoted on it as saying, we witnessed the collapse of the financial system in 2008. And all they've done and all they're still doing is print money to act like it didn't die. But the proof is in the numbers. In 2008, the Federal Reserve announced something they had never done before. They called it quantitative easing. But what it really is, is printing never before seen amounts of money. That money's been sloshing around and has mostly ended up in places like the stock market, which, even as we speak, continues to hit all-time highs. At some point, though, this money printing game has to stop, and the rest of the world knows this is a certainty. And in response, countries around the world have begun to move away from the dollar. China's begun their own bank transfer system, which is the first international payment system to compete with the US dollar-based SWIFT system. There's a worldwide move away from the dollar. They're trying to rush it out to be completed by, of all dates, September 2015. Russia as well has been purchasing gold at record levels and trade agreements around the world are for the first time in decades being done outside of the US dollar. For this and many other reasons, I've been expecting a collapse in the dollar. It's baked in the cake. And I've been telling my subscribers to prepare for this since 2010. Back in 2010, I said that we probably had five and no more than ten years left before the collapse. We're now five years in, and I'm seeing the first signs of a major collapse coming this fall. And part of my reason for this has come with my discovery of the Shemitah. 但系点解 Jeff Bobick 能够指出二零一五年九月十五日呢个指定性日期将会发生经济大崩溃呢？咁样系因为有极多方面嘅印证，而最重要嘅证据竟然系嚟自圣经。佢藉住猶太人基督徒拉比 Jonathan k a n e 所寫嘅書，得知到咗二零一五年九月十五日，將會係以色列自一九六七年六月七日重奪整個耶路撒冷嘅控制權後，踏入第五十年。而第五十年就係以色列嘅禧年，神將會取消所有債務，並歸還土地俾原主嘅年限。其中一本書《The Harbinger》係入華牧師於二零一一年十一月二十日所播放嘅《二零一二榮耀盼望》第九十四篇。精华短片《九一一事件》，神对美国的警告嘅主要内容。而另一本书就系 Jonathan k a n e 喺二零零四年九月出版嘅《安息年的奥秘》（The Mystery of the Shemitah）。Jonathan k a n e 发现原来每逢安息年 （Shemitah） 就系每隔七年踏入以色列人嘅安息年，世界经济都会出现大动荡。但每过五十年，踏进以色列人嘅禧年，神不单会为以色列行大事。甚至世界嘅经济都会出现大崩溃，出现全面重整。而下一次嘅禧年就系由二零一五年九月十五日开始。你未记二十五章一至十二节，耶和华在西奈山对摩西说：你晓谕以色列人说，你们到了我所赐你们那地的时候，地就要向耶和华受安息。六年要耕种田地，也要修理葡萄园，收藏地的出产。第七年地要守圣安息。就是向耶和华守的安息，不可耕种田地，也不可修理葡萄园。为落自长的庄稼不可收割，没有修理的葡萄树也不可摘取葡萄。这年地要守圣安息，地在安息年所出的，要给你和你的仆人、婢女、雇工人，并寄居的外人当食物。这年的土产也要给你的牲畜和你地上的走兽当食物。你要计算七个安息年，就是七七年。这便为你成了七个安息年，共是四十九年。当年七月初十日，你要大发国声，这日就是赎罪日，要在遍地发出国声。第五十年，你们要当作圣年，在遍地的一切居民宣告自由。这年必为你们的禧年，各人要归自己的产业，各归本家。第五十年要作为你们的禧年，这年不可耕种，地中自长的不可收割。没有修理的葡萄树，也不可摘取葡萄，因为这是禧年，你们要当作圣年，吃地中自出的土产。Right, this is the part I want to get into. I've heard you speak and write on it recently. It sounds fascinating. Take as long as you want here and just tell us more about the Shemitah. Sure. Regarding Shemitah, I want to state for the record that my discovery of it has emerged as part of my financial analysis. 
The Shemitah has religious connotation, but that's not my focus. The point is that there are evidence-based ramifications to Shemitah, and from a practical standpoint, that's what I wish to investigate and address. I'm just looking at the facts of what appears to be happening around September of this year, and that just happens to be the end of the Shemitah year. Whether this is a coincidence or not remains to be seen. And I should also say that I don't necessarily think this September will be the end crisis of all crises. It could be just the beginning of a process that unfolds that takes many years to end in total collapse. But that said, I first heard of the Shemitah after reading Jonathan Kahn's book, The Harbinger. That book mostly talked about eerie events related to 9-11 and the Shemitah. While I found all the events related to 9-11 to be incredibly interesting, the thing that really got my interest was in what he said about the Shemitah. Now as background, the Shemitah is the Sabbath year, and it's the seventh year of the seven-year agricultural cycle mandated by the Torah for the land of Israel, and it's still observed in contemporary Judaism. To put it simply, every seven years is a Shemitah year. Because it is based on the Hebrew calendar, it doesn't fall on the same dates every year as our Western calendar, but it does follow quite closely. The Shemitah is also known as a time where all debts are settled, every seven years. It also can be interpreted as the washing away of things. On the second day of the year, that is 14 years ago, in 2001, at the end of the year, in the New York City, there was a major event in the year. When the Western world started, the most popular event was the most popular event in the year 684, in the year of the year of the year. Another, in the year of the year, in 2008, on the 9th of the year, the world has also been a war. 直正系另一次安息年嘅最后一日，美国股市打破历史，下跌咗七百七十七点，即系七个 percent。数字上正好对比二七年为循环嘅安息年。当日亦发生咗一件从未发生过嘅事情，就系、是、美国股市每日开市嘅时候，都会有一下响钟作示意。但当日响钟却历史性失灵咗，似乎系暗示股市喺当日将会大跌。But what caught my attention was that the last day of the Shemitah for the last two Shemitahs in 2001 and 2008 fell on days with a major market collapse. The last day of Shemitah in 2001 fell on September 17th, and that was the first day the U.S. stock markets opened after 9-11. That day had the greatest one-day stock market point crash in U.S. history up to that time. The Dow fell almost 700 points, or 7%, and it was a record that held for precisely seven years until the end of the next Shemitah year. That year was 2008. On September 29, 2008, the exact final day of the Shemitah, the Dow plummeted 777 points, which still today remains the greatest one-day stock market crash of all time. You may be noticing quite a few sevens in all of this. As well, on that day, it was the only known day on the New York Stock Exchange where the opening bell wouldn't ring. You're watching CNBC's Squawk on the Street, where the opening bell should have rung five seconds ago, but has not. I don't know whether we actually need the bell to start oh, hold on. There is a little bit of a consternation down here about there being no bell. All right. Our market reporters are, are standing by. Bob Pisani, have you ever seen anything like Nobel? Yeah, uh, that's a little strange here, but. 另外喺历史上，无论系第一次世界大战同埋第二次世界大战，一九七三年嘅全球金融同埋能源危机，一九八零年同埋一九八七年嘅股灾，甚或系一九九四年嘅债券大屠杀，都正正系发生喺安息年嘅日子。I then decided to go back to Shemitah years since 1900, and I was very surprised at what I found. 1917 was a Shemitah year. 1917 marked the year that the U.S. entered into World War I, and soon after, the Russian, German, Austrian, and Turkish empires had collapsed. Remember, the Shemitah is a time of washing away. 1930, 1931 was a Shemitah year, and certainly wasn't a good time to be in the markets. From the beginning of the Shemitah year until the end of the Shemitah, the market dropped 50% from 200 to 100. And then after the final day of the Shemitah, the market dropped another 50% to below 50. Now, the next major Shemitah was in 1937 to 1938. And if you were in the market that year, you'd have lost nearly 50%. But, more importantly than the stock market during that Shemitah year, was what was going on in the world. During the Shemitah year in 1938, Germany began foreign aggression and seized Austria and Czechoslovakia. The world war that began in 1938 finally ended in September of 1945, nearly on the exact same day as the final day of the Shemitah. 
countless empires and countries were left devastated by that date, again a washing away, if you will. The next Shemitah was in 1973. In 1973, the Bretton Woods Worldwide Monetary System collapsed. The following Shemitah was in 1980, seen by most gold bugs and market historians as marking the end of the massively inflationary 1970s. Then the next Shemitah year ended in 1987. During that time, Black Monday occurred, the biggest one-day percentage drop in history on the Dow. That same week, the London stock market closed due to an extremely rare hurricane having hit London. Again, a sort of washing away. During the next Shemitah, the 1994 bond market massacre caused financial strife worldwide. And I've already mentioned the incredibly bizarre things that happened during the next two Shemitahs in 2001 and 2008. Jeff Barrick 指出，喺财经界，七年嘅安息年循环可谓系人所共知嘅事。二零一五年九月十五日不单系安息年，甚至系每七个安息年，即系四十九年嘅希年开始。全世界无论政府、军队、经济财团、联合国，甚至系天主教嘅教宗，都巧合咁样为今年九月所发生嘅大事而作出预备。所有世界性嘅重要政治、军事、宗教都指向九月，包括九月十五日系以色列新年嘅吹角节，即系二零一五年九月十三日至十四日之后嘅一日。如果今年嘅吹角节新月喺第二日先出现，咁样九月十五日就正正系吹角节。Of course, you can say that if you look for patterns, you can always find them in one way or another, and to an extent, that's true. But this Shemitah seven-year cycle is so eerily correct that it is well known on Wall Street as the seven-year cycle. For this reason, I've been keeping an eye on the end of the next Shemitah year on September 13th, 2015. And because of this, I began doing some research on what events may be happening in or around that time. And the amount of bizarre things scheduled for this coming September is what convinced me something is being planned for this fall. Yes. Everything you've covered so far is the past. Let's talk about the present and near future. Well, I, I decided to begin looking up the days on or around September 13th of this year to see if I could find any interesting events, and it didn't take long before I found numerous events all happening on or around that date of major significance. The first thing I found was that the United Nations opens its 70th session of the UN General Assembly on September 15th in New York City. World leaders from around the world will be attending. They call it their Jubilee Session. Now, I didn't mention this yet, but every seventh Shemitah, or in other words, every seventh seven-year period, or after every 49 years, is called the Jubilee Year, every 50 years. In the Jubilee, according to Jewish religion, it is the year when God, supposedly, gives back land taken away from their ancestors to them. Of note, in the last Jubilee, in 1967, Israel won the Seven Day War when Israel defeated Jordan and captured the West Bank, defeated Egypt and captured the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula, and defeated Syria and captured the Golan Heights. Looking even further back to the prior Jubilee year in 1918, the British Empire took back Jerusalem from the Turkish Ottoman Empire. And so in both prior Jubilee years, there was a major development in Israel. The next Jubilee year starts on September 14th of this year. As well, in September, the UN plans to launch a new plan for managing the entire globe called the Sustainable Development Summit from September 25th to 27th. Some of the biggest names on the planet, including Pope Francis, will be speaking at this summit. The focus of this plan is to expand the scope of global governance. Global governance can also be defined as one world government or a new world order. The Pope, interestingly enough, will be busy in the U.S. all of September, as on September 15th, the Pope will also be speaking at the U.N., and then on September 24th, he'll also be speaking at the U.S. Congress. The next thing I notice is that Jade Helm, a massive unprecedented rollout of the U.S. military inside of the U.S., runs from July 15th until September 15th. This is particularly interesting in that there always seems to be a drill being run by the government during when an actual crisis occurs. Jade Helm has already begun in preparations, and the amount of military equipment being amassed in the U.S. is truly mind-boggling. There's a lot of speculation that this amount of military buildup in the American South is in preparation for some sort of civil unrest. 
That speculation built when a number of Walmart stores recently closed on the same day across the southern U.S. with no notice due to plumbing problems and are said to remain closed for six months. This fueled speculation that is to be used for some sort of detention center for unrest. They said they wouldn't reopen for six months, which just happens to be after September. But it gets stranger and stranger. Recently, the New York-based Federal Reserve announced it's moving its operations outside of New York to Chicago because of concerns about a natural disaster. One might ask, what natural disaster are they expecting in New York that they aren't expecting in Chicago? Then, after the Fed's recent Federal Open Market Committee meeting, it took the highly unusual act of removing all calendar references from its post-meeting statement. Normally, in the post-meeting statement, they include calendar events for upcoming important dates like the next meeting. This time, they didn't, and they just alluded that a date range for their long-awaited 0.25% rate hike, which alone can almost teeter the entire financial and monetary system loaded with debt, would likely be in the fall. But while they didn't put any dates of future meetings in their post-meeting notes, they do have dates on their website of upcoming meetings. According to their site, the next meeting will be held just after the Shemitah on September 16th and 17th. Meanwhile, the U.S. federal government is buying another 62 million rounds of ammunition commonly used in AR-15s for training purposes, and NORAD announced that it is moving back into the Cheyenne Mountains because it is EMP-hardened, leaving one to ask why NORAD is moving into the mountains to protect against a major attack at this time. 另外，世界銀行 IMF 嘅行長 Christine Lagarde 於二零一四年一月十五日喺美國華盛頓嘅新聞發布會上發言時，竟然奇怪地要人留意七呢個數字 numerology。究竟 IMF 行長點解會喺新聞會上發表咁怪異嘅演算呢？定係佢哋早喺一至兩年前已經以密碼方式通知新名神秘密碼嘅 Freemason 會員，有關將會喺二零一五年九月十五日到達嘅禧年呢？ It certainly appears as though a lot is happening, all surrounding this September. Absolutely, and the list of strangeness goes on and on. There was the strange seven-minute speech by Christine Lagarde of the IMF talking about numerology and the number seven that she made in January of last year. She started the speech by saying, "As you can tell, I do what I am told," and she went on to say, "I want to test your numerology skills on the magic number seven. Most of you know that is quite a number." Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup.、Uh, as you can tell, I I do as I'm told. Numerology skills by asking you to think about the magic seven. Okay. Most of you will know that seven is quite a number in all sorts of themes, religions. That's a strange speech about numerology and the number seven coming from the managing director of the IMF. 此外，二零一四年五月十三日，法国外长亦公开发表有关距离天气混乱只有整整五百日嘅内容。而五百日后就系二零一五年九月二十四日，当日正正系以色列嘅赎罪日，亦已经踏入咗禧年。There was also French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius who made a bizarre speech in 2014, stating that we are on the edge of a climactic abyss. We are, all of you know it. On the edge of a climatic abyss. In fact, we have 500 days to avoid a climate chaos. Out of curiosity, I added up the days from that speech, and 500 days from it lands on September 23, 2015. Yet no one questioned him why 500 days exactly. 而著名經濟分析師 Martin Armstrong 喺二十年前已經預測。喺二零一五年十月一日，全球經濟將會出現一次重啟 （restart）。喺今年嘅七月，中國股市正按住 Webbot 嘅預測出現大跌市，並且持續到九月先至會出現真正嘅股災。同樣，希臘嘅財務危機亦印證今年九月將會出現嘅經濟大崩潰。You can find many more examples like this. Everything seems to be gravitating towards this September. Something's going on. What that is is anyone's guess. You want to take a guess?、Uh, there's too many variables to make a solid guess, but this is far too many coincidences that all seem to point to something massive happening around September of this year. 
Also, there's Martin Armstrong, who was jailed for having a computer model that amazingly predicts the fall of currencies, markets, and even nations, predicted 20 years ago that there will be a massive system reset, collapse, or crisis on October 1st, 2015. If you listen to the actions of the Fed, they seem to be worried about some sort of natural disaster to happen in the New York area. If you listen to NATO, they appear to be preparing for an EMP attack. If you pay attention to the U.S. military, they are apparently preparing for a massive amount of unrest inside the U.S. And if you pay attention to the U.N., September seems to be a very busy month with leaders from around the world, including the Pope, attending numerous major events. In fact, we've already seen the first rumblings of a coming collapse happening in both Greece and China. The Shanghai stock market has already begun to collapse, falling more than 30% in the last two months, and the Chinese Nasdaq fell 40% in the last three weeks. And in Greece, the banks and stock market have been closed for weeks, and they're laying the foundation for a civil chaos that I expect to fully foment over the summer and explode in September. This will set off a chain reaction that will shake the entire U.S. dollar-based financial system. This is enough evidence for me not to be anywhere near the U.S. from now until at least October, and specifically in the month of September. This is just too much happening all at once for my comfort. 最后 ，Jeff Burwick 亦呼吁美国人要及早将所有资产远离美元同美国银行，因为美国将会系呢次大崩溃嘅主角，会出现大混乱，所有人亦要买贵金属、水同食物，甚至枪械，预备不时之需。I've also been advising for years to have no significant assets in U.S. dollars, and certainly not in the U.S. bank. And I reiterate that more so now, based on what I see happening in the coming months. If I'm totally wrong and nothing major happens during that period, then great. It's really not of any harm to prepare for some catastrophic event in the financial and political systems during that time, because my advice for preparing for the end of the monetary system as we know it. Is the same for this September period as it has been for the last few years, and still continues to be. I'm just getting more adamant on it now. I've been advising people to get out of the Western financial and monetary system, get into hard assets, keep cash, precious metals, food, water, and guns on hand to last for at least a number of months, and move yourself and your wealth outside of the U.S. if possible. I think there will be trouble all over the Western world, but the U.S. seems to be ground zero for this coming crisis. These are all very ominous and negative predictions and advice. Are there any potential positives? Oh yes, absolutely. During any crisis, is often an opportunity to become wealthy. As long as you are aware of what's going on, this could provide tremendous opportunity. Most fortunes have been made in times of extreme crisis that hardly anyone saw coming. As just one example, I'm telling subscribers of ways to, with limited risk, make a fortune if some sort of market calamity occurs this September or October. And again, as I said, even if nothing dramatic changes this fall, all of our other advice still applies, and people should be taking that advice immediately. Very few market analysts see what's going on, and so we have a great advantage over them when the collapse comes, as most don't think a collapse is even possible, much less imminent. We're now in the final end game for the collapse of monetary, financial, political, and economic systems. Those who are prepared and can make it through the transition with themselves and their assets intact will be able to take advantage of wealth-building opportunities of a generational level. Those who are not prepared are going to get hurt in this collapse. 到咗今年九月十五日，究竟会发生乜嘢事呢？当踏入以色列重夺耶路撒冷嘅第五十年，即以色列嘅安息年同禧年。同时呢、这个亦系科学家牛顿所预测，系但以理书七十个七当中，再一次应验头七个七嘅四十九年，并踏入最后一个七，即七年大灾难嘅年份。究竟二零一五年九月十五日会否就系第一次出现基督徒被提嘅日子呢？